John Hart was a miller in New Jersey. And by the time the Revolutionary War breaks out, John Hart had made such a name for himself among his peers that he was actually selected for the Provincial Congress, the Revolutionary Congress, and he was thought highly enough of to be chosen as the first vice president, despite not being a lawyer or a merchant or one of the high class positions. He was just considered an honor honorable citizen, that public virtue that the founders respected so mightily. Additionally, at this time, he sits on the New Jersey Committee of Safety, which oversaw the war and the militia, and the Committee of Correspondence, which kept in touch with the other colonies. It really makes him one of the most powerful men in early revolutionary New Jersey. Now, by this point, he was already a real pretty old guy, already in his mid-60s, but when it becomes clear independence is going to be voted on, several of the colonies decide to recall their more hesitant delegates to the Continental Congress and replace them with more radical members that they thought would vote for independence. John Hart was one of these radical people that New Jersey sent to replace more conservative members of the Continental Congress. They sent John Hart knowing he was in favor of independence. He goes and votes for independence, and then he signs the Declaration of Independence. After this, as, as we've said before, uh, he is one of the many Continental Congressmen who see independence happen and say, I got to go do something important. And they leave the Continental Congress and go back to their home states because that's where the hard work was thought to be done. Hart goes back to the to New Jersey. He is almost immediately chosen as Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly under New Jersey's new constitution. And he is really, uh, of all the many things he does, uh, he, he assists in the war effort primarily. He helps raise money, helps secure people. And then in December of 1776, the British are coming. They come storming through New Jersey, and many patriots have to run away, including John Hart, who runs away and actually hides in a cave. John Hart spends several days in a cave, though luckily, just about a week and a half later, George Washington comes back into New Jersey, crosses the Delaware, which is pretty famous, you may have heard of it, and he retakes Trenton, scares the British and the Hessians out of the area, and John Hart is able to leave his new cave house and go back to his regular home. Now, it's interesting that he does go to his regular home, because just a year and a half later, well, Hart returns the favor to George Washington because George Washington needs a place to camp out for a little bit. And it's at John Hart's house that he spends a few days camping 12,000 soldiers on John Hart's property. Now, sadly for John Hart, he passes away not long after this of what they called gravel, which we now call kidney stones, which it's interesting that like stones, gravel, how that linguistic change was made. Now, that's not important. I just find that interesting. But... As I said, he passes away, and this is about two years before the actual war ends. So John Hart does not actually get to see the independence achieved for the nation who he helped drive towards that independence and, in fact, signed the Declaration of Independence for. So that is a grave, gravely short review of the life of John Hart, declaration signer and cave dweller.